Hello, thank you for joining me. Today, I'm starting a new photography project. If you haven't tried this before, basically setting yourself a project, something to achieve over a period of time, then I highly recommend it. Particularly if you're suffering from any kind of creative block or lack of motivation. My project is called the Clear Skies Project. And the reason for that is if you've watched some of my earlier videos, you'll know that one of the things I struggle with is days with no cloud. Now I've chosen to live in Spain, a country that is well known for its sunshine and sunny days, and therefore we get a lot of days with no cloud. We do get days with cloud, but we get a lot of days without. And I find it really difficult to get the motivation sometimes to go out on those days. And when I do go out on those days, I tend to just scout. I tend not to be taking pictures, but I can't help but feel I'm missing out somewhere. So, the Clear Skies project is going to run over probably about the next three months and I am going to be seeking to take pictures on days when there are no clouds in the sky. So if I go out and there's no clouds, I'm going to be looking for specific opportunities and I'm going to be looking for four techniques for getting interesting images when the sky is clear. One of the reasons that I find clear skies such a challenge is that I normally use the sky as the background to my image, even if it's only the, the top third of the frame. And all landscape images need a background of some sort. And if that background is just a block of nothing, it's not very interesting. So the first two techniques I'm going to be working on are designed to address that specific issue. The first technique I'm going to be using is the frame in a frame composition. Basically that's just shooting through, under or next to something that will block out a big chunk of the sky. The next technique takes the sky out altogether because it involves using the landscape itself as the background. Now that could be something that sticks up high, like a mountain or a hill, or it could be a wall of trees, or it could mean getting up higher and pointing the camera down and using a lake or the sea or the flat land with a play of light and shadow on it, hopefully as an interesting background to the shot. The third technique is one that I've never really thought about before, but I read it somewhere recently, and that is to include a person in the shot. Apparently, having a person in the shot, even if the sky isn't very interesting, makes the image more appealing. I don't know, but I'm going to try it, so <laughs> I suspect I'll be spending a bit of time posing in front of the camera and making use of the, uh, the camera's self-timer to make that happen. And the fourth technique is to actually make that sky a feature. Basically to use that big expanse of nothing as a whole load of negative space. Now that's going to require some very, very specific focal points, very strong shapes, contrasts, to make that happen. And that's one I think I'm going to struggle with more than any other in this part of the uh, country. But that's what a project is about, it's about setting some challenges and going for it. So this project isn't going to be every photo shoot and every video, but I will be taking the opportunity whenever I go out and I have clear skies like I have today, to work on the project and see what kind of images I can get. And what I'll be doing is sharing them as part of the videos that I put out and also in the various other places that I share my work. And I'll put some links in the uh, description to this video. So if you want to go and have a look at the works elsewhere, you can do that.
okay I found one possible composition it's a little bit too early just yet to actually be taking the shot I've got a little bit of time yet so I'm gonna have another quick look around before I make a decision and just see if anything better comes up in the next 15 20 minutes half an hour before it gets too close to sunset okay I've set up for a shot it's the composition I looked at earlier I didn't find anything any better let me just walk you through the setup and the composition while we're waiting for the sun to get a bit lower in the sky. So let's start off with the positioning. Uh, I'm on a bit of a hill, so I've got one of the tripod legs extended all the way down to counter that slope. And then in order to get the height that I wanted, I've had to extend the centre column. Not something I like to do too often, but... Uh, Sometimes it's the only way to get the height that I need. 18 to 105 lens uh, at about 30-ish millimeters. I will probably go for f16 uh, when the sun gets a bit lower. We might get a little bit of a sun star off the uh, sun as it dips through the edge of the mountain. Let's uh, just talk through the composition. So the reason I wanted the higher position is so that I can get that grass in the foreground, kind of here, in the frame, and hopefully that will catch the light nicely. We've got bushes on uh, both sides here, and uh, here of course, and then we've got that little uh, bit of uh, shoreline of the lake going out and the mountain in the background here. Now that mountain is going to be backlit, so it's going to be pretty dark. At the moment, the sun is a little bit too bright. It's just creating some flare in that top left corner of the frame. Uh, I'm hoping that it's going to hit the top edge, top left-hand edge of that uh, mountain peak. Um, and then I will aim for possibly a little bit of a sun star, or at least try to capture the the, uh, the sun looking its best and take the flare out of the scene. The sun's dipping down now. The trees are blocking it a little bit but it's still a bit too bright. I'm hoping, if I've judged it right, we should get some nice light still on the foreground and on the water, but the flare that is currently coming off of the sun should hopefully disappear. It's just a case of waiting now. Okay, the sun is dropping now. It's uh, almost on the edge of the mountain. So I'm gonna bracket the shots. So I'm at the F16, I'm doing 1 80th of a second for the first shot. Then I'm gonna dial that up to a 40th of a second. And then a 20th. And then I think we'll go for a 10th of a second. And that's given me a nice range uh, from uh, some very dark shadows in the, uh, the longer exposure through to some completely blown highlights in the last one, but uh, I can then merge those, probably because of the amount of fine detail there is here, I may well merge them in uh, Photoshop using uh, luminance masks, luminosity masks. Um, but we'll see, it might work in, uh, in Lightroom's HDR merge, I don't know. Okay, uh, the sun's gone now, it's behind the mountain, 
and there's no clouds so uh, the chances of us getting anything uh, interesting post sunset are pretty slim it's always a mistake to leave too soon and uh, I've just seen the way some of those reflections are developing and uh, they look quite nice so I've just recomposed to make the best advantage of them and uh, I'll just give you an idea of what that looks like now on the video so I'm going to use this uh piece of shoreline here to create some foreground interest lead the eye into the frame and then we've got the reflections in the water that are looking really quite nice now and then as much as possible using the hills and mountains in the background to actually form the background to the image got to leave some sky in otherwise it wouldn't look right but there's some interesting color in the sky 40 millimeters f8 and it looks like 1 1 60th of a second should do it nice reflections no cloud but still nice so i think we'll uh, we'll grab a shot of that and then it will be time to pack up and go home So, the end of another shoot and the end of another video. I hope this project is going to be interesting for you. And as I said, it's not going to be every single video. Uh, it might actually only form a part of some videos. And sometimes I might actually do a whole video on the project. Um, as I said, I'll share the images um, on the videos and through all my other uh, outlets. And as I said again, I'll put um, uh, some links in the text, in the links below, so that you can actually go and have a look at the images there if you want to. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, now would be a good time. There'll be a subscribe link coming up on the screen, one side or the other, can't remember which, um, in a minute. Uh, and if not, there's always the subscribe link down in the sort of menus underneath. So. All it remains for me to say is thank you very much for watching and until the next time, bye.